Dominic here, hope you guys are doing well. And what often serves as the eerie yet very profound basis for many undertakings in astronomy is the unceasing search for extraterrestrial intelligence. In fact, this deep desire to understand, appreciate, and in some cases communicate with the unknown has always been one of the founding purposes of the science. So in the same effort to find out who and what else may be out there, scientists, researchers, journalists, authors, and even filmmakers have all tried their hand to describe the potential reality around communicating with aliens. I'm excited and a tad scared to say that we've tried to do so once again. Astronomers from a very popular research group have sent a radio message to a neighboring star system that one, has planets that could contain life, and two, is close enough that a reply can be heard within 25 years. So the question has to be asked, have we screwed ourselves over and accidentally given away our position to an intergalactic warlord of some sort? Or have we opened up a new frontier of scientific exploration? Let's check it out. things first, this notion of sending bits of humanity into space so that someone or something may find them isn't new. Not only do you see the concept beautifully portrayed in art or cinema, but it's also acted as a founding part of many historic space missions, like the Voyager 1. The Voyager 1 probe, which is actually the farthest man-made object from Earth, contains a gold record. Yes, a physical gold record that contains sounds and images from the blue planet. The idea is to survive time in a sense and provide a token of humanity, whether it be music, sounds, images, thoughts, and so on, to whomever may find it. In the same vein, the 2017 version of the message was in radio form. Scientists in Norway used a massive antenna to beam an 80 hour long message containing descriptions of counting, geometry, trigonometry, and basic timekeeping out into space. The information specifically was sent to a red dwarf star called GJ273 in the constellation of Cassis Minor, a star cluster just 12 light years away from Earth. Now, you may ask, what's the worst part of this entire exercise? And it's the waiting game. We have to wait at least 25 years for a potential reply and ponder all of the bad things that might happen in the meantime. Okay, well, here's where things get a bit hazy. Research groups like METI and SETI are thriving, and when they send messages like this, it's really hard to ignore the work that they are doing. In fact, the entire objective of communicating with extraterrestrials has seen tremendous support or debate across the globe, and the implications of intentionally trying to find aliens are very contentious. The messages that we send into space are very much intended to comprise all of humanity. And as you can imagine, in a world ridden with social and political divisions, it's kind of hard to agree on what must get included in like an 80 hour message. That being said, even physicists like Stephen Hawking publicly publicly denounce such behavior, because if an alien civilization was to receive our memo and act upon it, it would almost certainly be far more advanced than we are, which could mean a catastrophic doomsday. Dan Wertheimer, a scientist at UC Berkeley who studies this exact stuff, go bears, says this, it's like shouting in a forest when you don't know that there are tigers, lions, bears, or any other dangerous animals there. Clearly the cause is noble, but the ramifications are potentially dangerous. I think an almost inescapable similarity between humans is our frequent need to look up at the stars and question our purpose. We yearn for a deeper understanding of our place in the universe and our curiosity drives us to do some pretty crazy things. So whether or not you agree with our methods of exploring such ambiguities, I think it's important to understand why we're doing them and the dangers associated as well. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.